Okay, the topic of today is prostate cancer. Um, my father just got diagnosed with this. Uh, not the, well, I guess they have a, detected a small enough of a possible um, tumor that they, they know that they can do a slight radiation, local radiation, without having to go through chemotherapy or anything else. So I'm happy for that. Um, none of those are my beliefs. These are my father, this is his world. So um, my, I don't have the same beliefs on chemotherapy or even on any of those other procedures. But I do understand that each person is at their own level of understanding and their own ways or lack of ways to get out of such situations. Um, and then also the vitality is important, like how much vitality is there to push back on whatever remedy is tried. So you need that. That's another key piece of the puzzle. So, um, so just the prostate cancer. Um, one of the things that is very interesting about prostate cancer has to do with dairy products. And I'm not anti-dairy, which a lot of people are, because they, it's just so easy to just throw God's foods out the window of history without investigating, you know, the processes and things which have changed those foods. Uh, because that's much more work in a way. You have to go and figure out not only the, that the best milk you can find probably has uh, soy-laced milk because of the estrogen uh, food and supplements and colza and canola pulps and uh, soy meal or flours or even oils and different things that can be used at a supplement level into their feed. Um, even while saying we don't use hormones for animals. Well, they don't say that because now they figured out the natural way to use natural plant hormones so as food. So, um, you know, so that affects the milk and then you're going to have um, the, the race that's been multiply, you know, breeded and hybridized so many times that it crossed out, it's made, bred out all the rustic qualities and brought in just a milk making machine. And so that's created a lot of thin, you know, thinned out product where you have less vitamin uh, per um, per ounce, you know, and so that creates a, a weaker product in general. Um, and then that's not going to be healthy. So, um, so we are we have that we have and that goes back. I mean, we have to rebreed all these European breeds back in and we have to do so much work. Yeah. So and these things are hard to get done right away, they will start coming through and maybe at great speed once uh, uh, some of the powers that be topple to a certain degree and we get a little fresh air there, which is on the way. But, um, but so, um, so the milk problem and, and then low iodine milk, which is pretty much everywhere. And, and we need more iodine the more that there's toxins in our environment. So it's like we need more and we've got less, you know. <laughs> and so um, we've got less than we had before and we need more than we had before. So finding a way to enhance the milk and use nature and vanilla and different things to enhance that and bring about the iodine cofactors which are found in vanilla and, and allow that to, to, to help the iodine um, be assimilated. And, and that's the key. Iodine is all about assimilation. So it's not really about um, where you find it. It's like how are we going to assimilate it. And so animal and active forms such as raw milk from like Jersey cow or or from you know healthy A2, um, which is what they call that um, A2 cattle. So that those are the ones that have been less crossbred. They're usually a little smaller, and they retain some of their rusticity from some of the earlier breeds like Devon and and the Swiss and 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 the Jersey and Guernsey and different um, types of I guess not just Celtic cattle, but a, a, an older older breed. Um, so, um, so that's just one element there. Um, but so this is like trying to go, you can't just go straight to the subject because it's so vast how we got here. So we get to the point where all these, you know, 50% of, uh, prostate cancers, uh, 50% increase, uh, in prostate cancer in groups who, you know, are high consumers of dairy products. And this would be typical dairy products, which is like horrible, right? And so um, finding a way, and I'm not saying everything's horrible, like there, there is some, some help, there's some, there is some, some, um, some 
secret windows and winks, you know, and nature winking at you and allowing certain things, there is. And there's a lot of imports, to be honest with you, when it comes to um, cheese, at least. That's one area that that's been allowed to a certain degree. So there is a way out, but you just have to find it, right? And so, um, so um, a lot of this calcium that's getting into the body, um, yes, we have vitamin D deficiency behind that too, and that magnesium deficiency, they're both there because without, they work together by the way, so you can't just take vitamin D alone anyway because it needs to be with A, so that's fermented cod liver oil and you have to go and buy that so that way you keep those two together. And then you have to get your K2 covered through like emu oil, which I call this the threefold remedy if you want to look it up on other podcasts. And so those three are going to be working together, the fermented cod liver oil, the magnesium, and the emu oil for the K2. And the K2, magnesium, and A and D, that's all going to work together. Um, and they're going to get, be very active forms of these vitamins, so it's really going to help quickly and synergistically. Um, so, but... The reason that we're having this problem is because it's not it's it's not only the the, the milk the dairy but it's also um, the lack of vitamins. So the lack of these deficiencies are creating to where a situation where the, once it gets into the body, the, um, the the calcium cannot even be used properly. And a lot of that has to do with magnesium deficiency because magnesium is kind of like the buffer of calcium. It's the it's the limiter and it renders calcium less aggressive and the vitamin D allows it to get delivered through locks and keys and hormone, this activating hormone, allowing it to get all the way into the right tissues and the right areas um, without harming the body. And the magnesium also brings about this type of viscosity, I guess you could imagine. Imagine a type of viscosity that once it solidifies with the structure in a more lattice like the teeth, well then that, that viscosity becomes flexibility. And so that's how magnesium works, to give you simple terms, like it not only preserves things and, and allows for dilation and parasympathetic kind of healing um, through, its, um, through its capacity to like natural calcium channel blocker, um, it, it, it's hypotensive, it helps to uh, stop the calcium contraction uh, from all the hypertension, and that's what we used to give magnesium for hypertension. Um, it has a positive effect on, on cholesterol levels and everything else, even though I don't really enter into the traditional mainstream cholesterol argument. I, I actually have a chapter called Cholesterol, I Love You uh, that I wrote a long time ago, which, which shows you kind of where I'm at with that. But um, not because the cholesterol itself, um, not because high cholesterol is like the most amazing thing ever, uh, but it's more like w the cholesterol itself is not to blame. It's why the body has to produce that. And that's where you got to go figure that out. And that could be the triglycerides or the sugars or whatever else. So it's not, all, you know, toxins. There's all sorts of things. But so it's not about um, the cholesterol itself. It's about why the body is using that way to protect itself. Now, so if you don't want to stop its way of protecting itself, that would be horrible. But you want to figure out why it's having to use cholesterol to protect itself and increase its production of, of such. So that's a different way of looking at the cholesterol. But anyway, um, the prostate cancer um, um, can be better not only through the K2. The K2 is magical for prostate cancer and I recommend people to not only I mean it's like an oil it's like a sipping oil you can take teaspoons of it you can put it in the fridge so it's harder um, and like butter or something and you can take it there like two or three uh, teaspoons and you take this every day if you're going through prostate problems or even a preparative preventative etc like that would be better right to be a lifelong practice and so you wouldn't be doing this all the time, but like two or three times a year, you'd be dosing up and buying a bottle and it's like 40, 50 bucks and you'd, you'd knock it out. Um, and if you have these conditions, then you'd want to like spend a little more there and get more, sort, more, act, more daily, uh, use more of it, right? And so people have even been known to put it in the um, rectum, you know, like as a, not a, dep de 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 what is it called, depositive? Uh, suppository, I think that's what it's called. So I've been living in France for 15 years, so I get all my terms mixed up. But <clears throat> so that um, that can also be given there underneath uh, um, through the rectum, and and that gives a local source of the vitamin K2. It's amazing for skin and everything else, but you can use it there directly. So this is one of the key features because the K2. I mean, 
We know that like the magnesium helps convert like omega-3s and certain fats down into prostaglandines and anti-inflammatory pro um, prostaglandines, etc. But we also know that the K2 helps with the prostate. This is like um, the blood in general and um, helps as well with the non-calcification. Like all of these, like the A and D, they get antagonized when they're not um, um, in um, used in the right ratio. So if you have too much of one, then it offsets the other. So the K2 comes in there and has, acts like a, like a little uh, umbrella over that and calms that whole game, meaning that no matter what's happening with that offset, it kind of fills in the pieces. And so that's what we need. And I know that sounds like just, okay, that doesn't sound scientific, but it is. And it's coming from a lot of studies that have been read and reread and lots of big words and all this stuff to come back down to actually what it's actually saying. And so this is the, what my gift to, is to people, if I can, is to try to simplify some of these things. Um, down to a more not mechanical slash alchemical I don't know there's some sort of level of understanding the mineral itself or the thing itself and how it moves in the body and what it does and and it gives you a better picture of how to use it so I think it's more liberating to a certain degree than being lost in a million studies and trying to figure everything out because you can have a million studies that are all going the wrong direction on their final result, but the, within that study, you can find very interesting information if you're trying to, you know, take things another way, which may be more healthy for people and not just to promote some sort of patented molecule or whatever. And this is all natural in a way. This is naturopathy pure, I guess you could say. So, um, so the prostate really is 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 um, destroyed by this calcination and by the calcium that um, ends up destroying it. It ends up like rigidifying the structures. And so we need the magnesium to be in there to calm that process. And then we need the K2 to be in there to deliver that, um, um, those special types of fats and that special type of like, uh, you know, the K2 is a special type of fat um, and a high quality of fat, which helps the, the prostate. And so we need that, um, you know, like it's almost like the master hormone. The master hormone is cholesterol, you know, and that feeds down into all the sex hormones like testosterone and estrogen and everything else. And so this K2 acts as like a, a master material which the body can use to create the right cholesterol and the right um, hormones. And, and to fight the, the fake hormones that we're fighting all the time in the water, the air, the plastic the the so many things we bring in from medications to vaccines to antibiotics and all these things like you know there's there's like a estrogen capacity or estrogen mimickers are all over in the environment from pesticides on down to everything else the, the pill and the water supply and just there's tons of things that estrogenize you know and these these empty fats without much vitamin content within the fat these are all estrogen estrogen uh, mimickers and bringing about more estrogens into the body and so this is going to um, also cause um, the problems for the prostate. So um, this masculine, um, you know, testosterone-centric um, system, which um, has been thwarted to a certain degree. So you need this master um, molecule to create the right cholesterol and the right type of hormone there and deliver that hormone and start pulling down that inflammation and getting that down not only through the magnesium and not only through vitamin d which we talked about in the threefold remedy if you want to look that up but also through um through the k2 and k2 is the big missing piece it's the missing piece it's like you know the french understood the k2 mystery because they have it in foie gras which is like one of the reasons why they're stopping foie gras around the states. You know, they say it's animal cruelty, but I don't believe so. I think they know that the vitamin is in there, and it's the only way that we can get it in a modern society, with the exception of a few little areas and supplements. So at a, at a high enough concentration to be therapeutic, and so we're, you, you know, we 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 have to safeguard the places and ways in which we can find it. You know, if you can find goose co goose foie gras and order it online from France in a can and take that then you won't need to take this this stuff you know and and it will be more expensive of course but it will be worth it too and, and so far as what it can do it's kind of like a you know they call them aphrodisiacs and all these things in france but what does that mean aphrodisiac i mean it just means it stimulates the life forces and it stimulates it's healthy to a certain degree if something has that power that libido power and that kind of 
power there than it has of power in general. So, um, I mean, especially in this type of case of like, you know, we're not just taking some sort of like, you know, stimulant that's just trying to stimulate the, the system. This is more like, you know, vitamins are not stimulants, you know, so at that level, um, they're much more, um, they can be powerful, but they're not like, you know, just trying to over wear out the use or whatever of a tissue or an area. Um, so that's what I would recommend on prostate is to get that covered. That's a basic thing. It's very simple. You know, the cod liver oil, the, the magnesium uh, transdermal every day, and then hit the, 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 the K2 internally and for the prostate below. And this can be powerful. Walkabout brand, you can find emu oil. That's the brand I use and it's a non-refined and they're the best. And and share this with your friends, you know, and, and, and remember the foie gras also works there too. And and so that's another way you can pull this off too. I've seen you can order frozen foie gras from America, I think, in these little packs and you just open them up and eat them with a little honey direct. You don't have to cook them straight out of the freezer. You can just let them thaw for about 10 minutes and, and throw some honey on there and eat these like once every couple of days if you're having this issue and just order these I mean or you can cut that lobe or whatever it is into those little packs and do that yourself but so there's a way to turn this food into medicine but we have to know how to do it you know and no one's gonna tell a lot of people that because they may not have that background so anyway trying to do what I can and um, yeah so take care of yourself and don't get the fake stuff always get the right stuff from the heart of tradition.com that's the website behind and um, it's not as a full disclosure, of course, I, I sell that product, but at the same time, it's like the glass bottles from the source itself, $3 a week. Um, you know, there's people out there selling for $150 a week for transdermal magnesium. They have the word Zextine written everywhere, and you think, oh, this is the real thing. It's not. So if it doesn't have the Zextine inside logo, it's not coming from the city of Vendam in Holland, which is the actual only and original source. There's no other place in Holland doing this. So it's very easy to track, and there's no other place where we have access to the Zextine to that degree in this type of batch-controlled mo- um, um, uh, batch controlled processing so this is where they take it from this natural salt pillow formation there and it's a pure natural state magnesium chloride you cannot just create that from chalk and everything else which is what they do to make magnesium chloride in Asia and other places they just will extract it and solvent extract it pull the potassium off of it do all these things and heavy metals and then they sell it to you as magnesium chloride so oil or wherever so we don't want to do that we want to get the right stuff at the molecular level it's much higher chelation no dilution uh, strong product in glass without endocrine disruptors at the heart of tradition.com